Since the start of mankind, humans have stolen the earth from animals. They have destroyed their habitats through pollution, agriculture, and a growing population. Forests are being burnt down to the ground. The never-ending expansion of the human territory is trespassing the boundaries of wildlife, causing more and more human-animal conflicts. Many species are now extinct or on the verge of it due to poaching, the illegal trafficking and killing of wildlife. Tootsie sadly cannot put a stop to it, but she can do her part to protect the animals. She has decided to build a rescue center to protect all species. I spent 100 days building a zoo in Minecraft. In this video, I will be using the Zoo and Wild Animals mod, which adds a multitude of different animals to the game. Though some animals are neutral, I still have to be quite careful because most of them are hostile when not tranquilized. If any of you are interested in knowing how to download the mods I used in this video, I will be posting a short and simple tutorial on my Instagram at TootsieYT in the weeks to come. And by the way, I have already posted tutorials on mods from my previous videos. All that said, let's jump straight into the video. On day one, I spawned by the coast and the first animal I saw was this rhino. I quickly realized that I had spawned in the middle of a lion pride. I had a quick look in the animal care guide and then I started chopping down some wood. In the distance, I saw this humpback whale and thought she looked super realistic for Minecraft. After making my first stone tools, I realized there weren't many common animals like cows and sheep, so I decided to kill off some rats. After getting gnawed on by this lion, I stared at the beautiful fauna that was all around me. After befriending some macaws, I spotted this village and started getting a few crops and I also looted the chest. When the night came, I went into these empty villager houses and dug my way down to find some ores. On day two, I found this brown mushroom which would be essential for making tranquilizer darts. I also needed some string to be able to make some nets. So I lured the spiders from this cave over to me and got the string. Being in a desert, I quickly came upon this temple, but there were a few zebras guarding it and one of them gave me a little kick in the face. <laughs> when I came back to my senses, I made my way down to the treasure chests. I collected all the loot and was delighted to find some spider eyes, which were also essential for making tranquilizer darts. That night, I actually found my first diamonds, but you will soon realize that diamonds are not the most important ore in this video. On day three, I was frantically looking for some sheep to make a bed, and I actually came across this village. And for some reason, I wanted to show off my amazing parkour skills. <laughs> When the night came, finally, I found some sheep, but truly, the common mobs are actually pretty hard to find with this mod. On day four, I came across a tiger, and that reminded me that maybe it would be time to start making my zoo. So I started by getting two macaws and a meerkat. In normal Minecraft, there is only one type of iron bars, but there there were at least five. So I made some chicken wire and put the macaws and the meerkat in. That night, I captured a giraffe in my net. And then I tried to capture this elephant and he was not very happy. So basically, some animals you can capture just if they're sleeping, but a lot of them you actually have to tranquilize them before. I placed the giraffe in a little enclosure and named her Jiwoo, which is a unisex Korean name. By the way, the macaws are named Santos and Silva, and the meerkat is called Amari. After a bit of farming on day 6, I actually heard a minecart roll, and I realized that probably meant there was a mineshaft. I quickly stopped hearing the sound, so I decided to steal all the crops from the village. The next day, I went back mining and this skeleton almost killed me. He shot his arrows super well. <laughs> then I found some iron because I would be needing loads to make some iron bars. Finally, I found the mineshaft I had been looking for. 
I smelted some iron to finish off my armor and then I proceeded to kill all the mobs <laughs> that were hidden in the mineshaft. And I missed an opportunity to get a disc, but it was not a big deal. I slowly made my way through the mineshaft, making sure to get every single iron ore and of course to get every cobweb because I would be needing so so much string for the nets. I then started picking up all the rails because I knew that I would probably have to do an iron farm at some point. On day 10 I made my way back to the surface and admired Amari sleeping as I smelted my iron and I finished off the day by making my first tranquilizer gun. Day 11 was get cake by elephants day so I went back to the village and there were actually some diamonds in the chest so that was very exciting and then I got the chickens from the village because I would be needing some feathers to make some tranquilizer darts. I of course bred the chickens and made some darts and then I went to the river to get these kind of weird stones which were a new block from the mod to basically maybe use them as paths or building blocks. By day 12 I freed the two macaws and Amari because I don't know, I just hated the fact that they were just locked up in this box, they couldn't even see the sky, <laughs> so I just let them go. And so I started building my first enclosure, which would be the giraffe enclosure. I started fencing up the area and of course I ran out of iron immediately. <laughs> and so the next day a giraffe was walking by so I kindly pushed her in <laughs> and somehow she accepted it. And then I realized I really did not have any iron left so I put some sunflowers everywhere hoping that the giraffe would stay because she liked the flowers. <laughs> By the way I had gotten Jiwoo a friend called Young and I put them both with the other giraffe named Diggory which means lost one. <laughs> and I did not name him like that because he accidentally ended up in the cage, no. <laughs> I then did quite a bit of farming because the animals would be needing food and I guess another diggery giraffe came in, um, she somehow ended up in the enclosure and I did not push her in. By the way, the main threat for giraffes is actually habitat loss due to the increasing human demand for agricultural lands. On day 16 I decided to welcome this black rhino to the rescue center and I tried getting that elephant and I had the black rhino in the net already, so I just kicked the poor elephant. Oh dear. <laughs> I feel like I'm the main danger for elephants now. So as we all know, these two species have a very dark thing in common, which is poaching. By the way, according to the IUCN assessment from 2020, the white rhino is considered critically endangered and possibly extinct in the wild. On day 17, I continued working on the giraffe enclosure and I decided to give them this little hay ball to have fun with. And I tried giving them some salt, but it just disappeared, so yeah. <laughs> on day 18, I started working on Mr. Rhino's enclosure. I then spotted that the enclosure for the elephants was filled with elephants, I guess, and also some lions. On all the pictures I've seen of the African savanna, giraffes are always accompanied by herds of zebras. So I captured two zebras to share the enclosure with the giraffes. I also captured this majestic Bengal tiger. And by the way, shout out to all the Indian fans. Catastrophe struck when a lioness killed one of my zebras. I hadn't seen that she had gotten in. By the way, I think most of my Indian viewers are aware, but there are a lot of human-animal conflicts because tigers are threatened by habitat loss and therefore they go in Indian villages and attack people, so it is truly a problem either way. I spent the rest of the day decorating the giraffe enclosure and that lioness kicked me, probably because I had killed her sister, but I didn't know what to do when she attacked the zebra. On day 20, I decided to give a second go to the macaws enclosure, so I used some glass and I thought it would, you know, I don't know, feel more spacious. And Silva was so adorable, always staying by the chest, so I really wanted to make 
them like a nice enclosure. As we all know, birds can fly and I did not like this part. I did not like the fact that the birds couldn't really see this guy, that they were like fully locked up, even on top. I don't know why, <laughs> but I still went for it, hoping that I could make it look cute. Um, yeah, <laughs> it did not really. I was using oak leaves to decorate and then I thought maybe I could use oak leaves to make it look a bit more natural on top. The time had come for me to build an iron farm. Let's quickly talk about zoos. So there are two main types of zoos. So number one is only to make money and not caring really about the well-being of the animals. And the other types of zoos are of course, well, for the money because you have to make a living, but they are mainly to preserve the animal species who would be in the wild endangered. And to be fair, my macaw enclosure is not very good. So thankfully this is a game and not real life because in real life it would not be acceptable. I then started looking through the feeding options the mod offered. You could make something called kibble and then put it in a food barrel. And that isn't really how it works, but I wanted to discover the mod with you. On day 26, I decided to go get Mrs. Rhino to protect her from any poachers. I then jumped in the sea to go admire all the sea creatures. So there was an eel, a norca, a humpback whale, and I discovered that I could not shoot underwater, which was excellent. I had no clue how to get these sea animals. I then dozed off next to this friendly African elephant. On day 27, I tried to get a tiger friend for Sita, my Bengal tiger, and it did not go as planned at all. Finally, she got bored of me and I returned to Sita and told her that I did not manage to get a friend for her. <laughs> I then did a lot of wood cutting because surprisingly the most difficult ingredient to get for making kibble is apples. From days 28 to 30 I did a lot of mining and not for what you think. I wasn't looking for diamonds, I was looking for iron but also a lot of stone because I needed it to finish my iron farm. Even though I wasn't looking for it, I was still quite happy to find some diamonds because that meant that I could make myself some armor and protect myself a little more. On day 31, I made my way back to the surface and saw poor Santos and Silva in their cage and oh my god, there was a creeper. <laughs> and my excellent creeper killing skills resulted in a little explosion, but don't worry, I filled it up. With all the iron I had gathered, I was able to change the lion enclosure from dirt walls to iron bars, which was a little bit nicer. I actually realized that my zoo wasn't really a zoo because no one would come visiting. <laughs> it was more of an animal rescue or a wildlife preservation park. By the way, if there is anything you'd like to add in context with the video, you can do so in the comments. I would be delighted for us all to talk in the comments about different subjects. So maybe if you live in India, you could talk about the tiger and human conflicts. Or if you maybe know someone who works in a zoo or you work in a zoo or something, you could also tell me about your experience because I am very, very interested. Let's take a moment to talk about the perks of having a blind dog. Yes, you have heard me correctly. So if you haven't seen my face reveal video, I actually have a pet dog named Lucky. But what I failed to mention was that he is pretty much very blind and very deaf. So last night he was walking around the room or sleepwalking as it was in the middle of the night and he got stuck in the cable of my headphones, which were connected to my computer. I heard a large boom and it was actually the computer that had fallen over. I was so scared that parts of my computer were broken, but thankfully none of them were. But something was stuck in the computer. What was it? Hmm. Half of the USB part that you plug into the computer was missing. 
Hmm, basically it had snapped in two when the computer fell. So yeah, I do not have a mic anymore. But thankfully, Rake let me use his mic just for the second part of this video, so yeah. <laughs> I am so happy because without it, there would not have been a video today. Let's get back into it. So when I was done, I felt a bit daring and I jumped down using a water bucket, a thing I would not do if I was in hardcore. I then started capturing some villagers for the farm and that guy seemed pretty excited about it for some reason. I used the rails I'd found in the mineshaft and then I would push the villagers up using a furnace in a minecart. I had not planned everything very well because he came back down so I had to destroy the rails at the top. So yeah, I sent up all the villagers putting approximately three to four on each side. When I freed this particular villager from its minecart, I created a monster. And this pink villager was extremely stubborn and super hard to push in. Although there were a lot of villagers in the other village, I still needed to get one or two back from the other village. And that is exactly what I did and I guess that elephant wasn't very happy about that. On day 41, I decided to capture two lowland gorillas. The biggest threat to gorillas is hunting and trade, specifically the commercial trade in bushmeat, because the consumption of ape meat is considered to be prestigious. In the afternoon, I worked on the lion elephant enclosure, and I also decided to finish off the rhino enclosure. And I guess this lioness really enjoyed the company of Mr. and Mrs. Rhino. On day 42, I decided to accommodate the two gorillas. One was named Imani and the other Kolo. On day 43, I realized Sita had actually gotten out of her enclosure. I actually thought it was another tiger, so I checked her enclosure and no, it was Sita. I of course got her back into her enclosure to protect her as well as any other human. On day 44, I was delighted to see that my iron farm worked and I actually made myself a machete. And I guess that was just for the fun of it because I did not really use it. On day 45, I decided to explore the savannah and I spotted this Komodo dragon and also some dried bamboo. After getting kicked by an Asian elephant, I spotted some hippos. I actually got the privilege of seeing some hippos in the wild in Africa and the way they move their ears is adorable. I also bought back a zebra and made sure there were no lions in the enclosure this time. On day 46, I went exploring and found a jungle. I collected some wood and cocoa beans and then I came across a chimpanzee and I do not know why I shot at it with a tranquilizer dart because they don't actually need to be tranquilized for me to get them in the net. I actually had to change the shaders because the BSL shaders were not working very well in the jungle. On day 47, I started chopping down quite a few trees, which reminds me of my intro. Hmm, not very good. <laughs> but yeah, I was trying to get some saplings to decorate my enclosures back home. So the shader I had put was a bit bright on my eyes compared to the BSL, so I had to get used to it, but the water looked beautiful with it. I swam in the shallow waters and spotted this anaconda and then I spotted this turtle and I thought it was a snake really until I caught it and then I was like, turtle? Hmm, I thought it was a snake. <laughs> On day 49, I made my way back home and checked all my animals and enclosures and I spotted Mrs. Rhino on the wrong side of the fence. I put the chimps in with Imani and Kolo. I named one of them Snoozy, I think you can guess who, and the other Rocco. Mrs. Rhino had a sleepy and woke up back in her enclosure. I then put Dave, my anaconda, in half of his enclosure. I then spent the next few days AFK at my iron farm. On day 55, I replaced the dirt barrier with actual iron bars and Imani was pretty happy about that. I also finished Dave's enclosure and he hissed happily. In between all of the enclosures, I decided to start making some paths. And for some reason, I decided I would put jungle leaves around the giraffe and zebra enclosure instead of iron bars. I quickly realized how small the elephant and lion enclosure was, so of course I doubled the size. 
I made the most of the night time because the animals were sleeping to remove the metal bars, but they woke up so I had to finish everything in the morning. From days 57 to 59, I worked a great deal on the enclosures. As I was working on the lion enclosure, let's talk a bit about lions. Their biggest threats are obviously human-based, like most animals. So the top four being habitat loss, trophy hunting, poaching and human-lion conflicts. There are currently more lions in captivity than there are in the wild. This is true for a lot of animals, but basically cubs are often captured in the wild to be sold as pets. On a much less serious note, yes, I am indeed not completely filling up this hole, just hiding it because I do not have that much dirt, so yeah. <laughs> On day 60, I realized that I did not like the completely enclosed bird enclosures, so I decided that I would set my macaws free. Instead, I decided to build an enclosure for Sita, the tiger, because she was pretty far from everyone else. This time, it was Mr. Rhino's turn to climb onto the fence, so I gently pushed him in. Santos had stayed nearby, so I decided to tame him with some kibble. And truthfully, it was quite nice to have him on my shoulder rather than locked up in a glass cage. To make kibble, I needed apples, and so I went to the forest to chop down some trees. I then put Sita in her unfinished enclosure just because I didn't want her to be lonely any longer. And that night, I captured this lovely brown moose. I then put down a feeder and some water for my little Santos. And I guess Miss Sita climbed over the fence once again. I made some electric fences and almost died on them, so no way was I going to put that around Sita's enclosure. I made some chicken wire, which used up less iron to make, to hopefully prevent Mrs. Sita from getting out of her enclosure. I was then working around Dave's enclosure and suddenly I heard this horrible noise. Santos was hurting and at first I thought he was stuck in something but no he was still hurting and I did not know what to do it was not stopping but he wasn't dying so I took him on my shoulder and he died I really hated that moment so much I just couldn't understand because I'd left some water out for him and I guess he just didn't go near it so yeah that was pretty disappointing so I made the data book to be able to check the amount of water and food the animal needs and then I made some kibble and tamed Silva. I gave him plenty of food and put him next to some water. I once again tried getting Sita a friend and I tried capturing that poor tiger with a moose and a turtle and oh poor thing. <laughs> I needed to make Silva a tire swing so that he wouldn't get bored, so I went to a river and started killing some squids. Finally, I captured the tiger and named her Brana, which is an Irish name meaning sorrow. And I named her like that totally because I kept hitting her and just that must not have been a nice time for her. That night, Silva was hurting because he was getting bored so I quickly made him the tire swing and he just didn't use it and I just did not know what to do and truthfully it wasn't even realistic like the food bar and drink bar and amusement bar would just go down super quick and of course he died and that was so annoying and the death was called death attack depression so yeah okay <laughs> After pushing Mrs. Rhino's bottom to get her back in, I decided to build the turtle's enclosure. It basically consisted of a sandy beach and a pool of water in the center. The threats to turtles are fishery bycatch, pollution, but also coastal development. Turtle hatchlings actually get confused by artificial lights coming from cities and go in the direction of the city instead of following the moonlight to the water. As you've just seen, Brona escaped and silly as I am, I decided to tame another macaw. This time I had everything prepared. I placed him a water bowl, filled it with water and he disappeared. Yes! From that point on, I swore I would never touch a macaw ever again because I am very bad for the survival of this species. I went exploring and found two cassowaries in this swamp. 
One of them was extremely hard to catch and I'm not really sure why. On day 75, I found this adorable platypus. <laughs> he was so cute. And I also found him a friend. When I arrived back to the rescue center, I placed the platypus and the cassowary with Sammy the sea turtle. I then decided to go get kicked by an elephant. No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I then decided to go back down to the mine shaft to get some more string. Basically, I wanted to make loads of nets and go back to the swamp area because I knew there were some other biomes around and I wanted to see what animals there were. In some large plains, I found loads of bisons and then on a mountain, I found a condor. By the way, don't hesitate to pause the video if you would like to read the facts. On the other side of the mountain, I found a flock of birds and could not resist taming one. So as I had everything on me, I got a plate of water, I fed him and then I thought, no, this is just not a good idea. The health bars were just going down too quick, so I decided to release him. I said goodbye to the cockatoo and went on my way. The next day I found some grizzly bears as well as some pumpkins. I put the grizzly bears in with the lions, I put the bisons in with the rhinos, and then I put the condors in with the giraffes. Even though I knew they would fly away, I really do not know why I captured them in the first place. I then put the mooses in a separate enclosure with some spruce trees, and I also added a few vines in the turtle enclosure that had now become a bit of a swamp. By the way, one of the biggest threat to mooses is actually global warming because they are being hurt by overheating, disease and tick infestation all tied to warming temperatures. On day 83, I was determined to get my first aquatic creatures in the rescue center. Um, so I started off with this humpback whale that I actually got immediately. I was surprised. So I did the same to that shark and it was not a good idea. I almost, almost died. And being careless as I am, I actually almost died just by fall damage. So yeah, very, very smart. Nevertheless, I had caught two different species, so now it was time to make their enclosure, which meant making a huge enclosure and fill it up with water, and trust me, that took quite a bit of time. The biggest threat to whales is, of course, whaling. As for sharks, they actually have a very low reproduction rate, which means that overfishing is a major threat. The decreasing population has actually led the IUCN to list the species as near threatened. As you've probably noticed, yes, I have stated quite a few facts about animals in this video, but imagine I wasn't actually stating facts. So the video would be, so I filled up the side with some dirt and then I started digging out the dirt that was in the middle. Then I placed a bit of dirt here then a little bit more on that side. Then I decided to put the dirt around here and to finish off um, a little bit there. So yeah, you can believe me that the facts would be way more interesting. <laughs> but that is actually why I do all the time lapses. It's because I like sharing facts about different things in my videos. I then went to get some hippos, which are actually the world's deadliest large land mammal. That was when I spotted a Galapagos turtus, and I actually spotted another one on top of that desert hill. The amazing thing is that all the animals on the Galapagos Islands have no fear of humans, and that is because they have never had natural predators. At the end of the day, I decided to go exploring once more. From days 91 to 92, I found this spruce forest with this village, and there were some cute little walruses and this huge house, which was really, really funny. I also found some beavers and this mushroom biome, but sadly there weren't any animals in it. So I went back to the spruce forest and found this mummy moose and her baby, and I had to take them both, obviously. On day 93, I sailed back home and was able to welcome the animals to their snowy enclosure. I was also delighted to present the white moose and her baby to the other mooses. 
The next few days, I decided to triple the size of the tiger enclosure because I wanted it to be a sort of jungle enclosure in which I could also welcome the apes. I decided to put some water-filled cauldrons and feeders in every single enclosure and I also made some lampposts to put all around the zoo, which wasn't really a zoo. I also put some benches that no one would ever sit on, but yeah. And now time for the coolest part of the video. I was able to make a truck and I drove in a ridiculous manner, but I love that part because I actually got my driving license a month ago and driving is so, so much fun. And don't worry, I don't always drive straight into rivers in real life. Mr. and Mrs. Rhino had escaped once again and truthfully, I was like, next time they get out, I leave them out. Just for fun, I got this chunky little walrus at the back of my truck and drove, uh, weirdly, but yeah, <laughs> little drift. It was time to build the entrance of my zoo, so of course I named it Tootsie's Rescue. And yeah, I sort of decorated, I put loads of wool behind and then I made a little lion and a little parrot <laughs> just for fun. I mean, they're not very realistic, but I thought it was pretty cute. I used yellow wool for the lion face and some acacia wood for the mane. And as for the parrots, I actually used redstone blocks because I had loads of unused redstone. And there we have it, day 100. I really, really hoped you enjoy this video, which was very animal-centered, but we can't expect less from building a zoo in Minecraft. Anyway, guys, I hope I will see you in next week's video. Love you.